look familiar? The stately home, the gravel. Look familiar? The stately home, the gravel, the shining car. You've seen it in a thousand ads. And why? Because success or failure in the luxury car market depends almost entirely on one factor, image. Now, Mazda hardly trips off the tongue as the best-known name on the UK car market. OK, the sports car buffs know it for the MX-5, but when they launched a good-looking executive car, the ZDOS 6, 18 months ago, they're really struggling for an image for the range. In fact, they've been through four advertising agencies this year alone. And they'll be facing more identity problems with the new car they're launching in January next year, the ZDOS 9, even more upmarket. They've not only got to convince people that it's a competitor to BMW 5 Series and Mercedes 220s, they've got to get it on the shopping list in the first place. So what's going to convince people to abandon well-respected marks and take a giant step into the unknown? Well, first, says Mazda, there's the shape. It follows on from ZDOS 6 in being styled by their new research and development centre in Frankfurt. They say they've created a shape that really stands out from the crowd as something completely different. I'm not convinced. And it hasn't avoided being smoothed by the dead hand of the computer for optimum aerodynamics. The drag factor is low, and there's a lot of attention to close fits and tolerances in the panel work. It's also extremely well built. Mazda has a reputation for build quality and reliability, and it comes with an excellent warranty. Three years or 60,000 miles with an eight-year paint guarantee. And that slippery shape helps the economy figures too. I've got around 27 to the gallon touring around. But in this class, one of the most important factors in running cost calculations is the resale value. It's really a bit early for Quentin and his disreputable mates to fix any figures yet. Nothing terribly new under the bonnet, a 2.5-litre V6 that's been in previous Mazda models. Now, those of us who in the past have enthusiastically followed Mazda's lone commitment to the Wankel rotary engine will be disappointed to find a relatively conventional piston unit under here instead of a, a twin rotor Wankel. Would have been far more exciting if they'd fitted one. Now, I know the roads are dirty this time of year, but this car does seem to get amazingly filthy in a very few miles. And a direct result is you end up with very dirty trouser legs. And if you don't want permanent wash day hands, then get some shares in one of these. Certainly a well-equipped car with driver and passenger side airbags, with cruise control, air conditioning, traction control to avoid wheel spin in muddy conditions and anti-lock brakes. Mazda say that when it goes on sale in January, it'll cost under £25,000 and that to achieve uh, an equivalent specification with one of its rivals, you'd have to spend at least £5,000 more. All cars come with a four-speed electronically controlled automatic transmission whose computer is integrated with that of the engine, the traction control and the ABS. Certainly handles well, they're very proud of their all-new suspension system and it works. The car rides smoothly, body roll is well controlled and adhesion and road holding are excellent. So why should you take the plunge and buy one of these instead of an Audi, a BMW, Citroen, Ford, Mercedes, Peugeot, Renault, Rover, Saab, Toyota, Volvo, Vauxhall, to name but a dozen? Well, one of the best reasons is emotive. As you get to know the Mazda better, you settle into it and even start to throw it around a bit, you soon realise it's amongst the best of that bunch. 
when they do go on sale, you certainly won't be seeing them everywhere. Mazda say they're going to sell 500 in the coming year. So if you do buy one, you'll be part of a small but exclusive club. What was it Groucho Marx used to say about a club? Anyone had had me as a member, I wouldn't join. Still take the line.